home prices are up 47% since 2020. And in many cities, the prices are not going down at all. We're only four years into the decade and home prices have already appreciated more than the entire 2010s and 1990s, which is crazy. In this video, we're going to discuss why this is an issue. And I'm going to show you exactly what you should do if where you live is unaffordable. So make sure you stay until the end. But first, I need you to hit that subscribe button. If you want to get better at real estate investing, you have to follow this channel. Also, make sure you go to the description of this video. There's a bunch of free resources that help you get started in real estate investing. Let's watch a clip explaining the housing affordability crisis. Country, despite higher mortgage rates, which should lower demand and push prices down. If you look at any affordability metric, it is flashing at least a yellow, if not a red signal. Housing is expensive. A recent Realtor.com survey found nationally buyers need to make about $116,000 a year to purchase a typical home. Prices up a staggering 40% in just the past four years, putting home ownership out of reach for many. It used to be late 20s or early 30s when people became first time home buyer, but now it's becoming in the mid thirties or even late thirties. The persistent lack of homes for sale, keeping prices high. Many sellers staying on the sidelines, thanks to what economists call the lock-in effect. Homeowners unwilling to sell and give up the ultra low mortgage rates they locked in just a few years ago. A $400,000 home in 2021, when mortgage rates were just below 3%, meant a monthly payment of nearly $1,700. At today's rate, that same home is about $1,000 more each month. Home prices defying gravity nationwide, especially in the Northeast, where prices are up 11% from a year ago. So let's talk about some of the things that were mentioned in that clip. These are some huge issues, so we need to break them down one by one. The first thing they mentioned is the idea that higher interest rates were supposed to bring prices down. Now, I understand why someone might make that assumption, but let me explain why that's actually wrong. So remember, at the beginning of this video, I mentioned that prices have increased in the 2020s by 47%. Do you know what would have happened if prices didn't go up a ridiculous amount over the past four years? The lock-in effect they're talking about wouldn't matter as much if the prices hadn't increased 47% since 2020. If home prices were more stable, then a homeowner with a low interest rate would have a lot more affordable options to consider in spite of the fact that interest rates have gone up as well. According to Redfin, 89% of homeowners have a mortgage interest rate of 6% or less. Let me show you an example of what I mean. If someone had a $400,000 home at a 5% interest rate, the mortgage would be roughly $2,200. If they sold their house and purchased another $400,000 house at the most recent rate of about 7%, their mortgage would be roughly $2,600. That's a $400 difference. And the majority of people moving from one house to another one that's fairly similar and and fairly close in price can reasonably afford that. But the problem is the interest rates have gone up, but also the home prices have gone up like crazy. And because of this, those with low interest rates are not selling. And honestly, I don't blame them. The problem with that is it's kind of like a domino effect because people are on the sideline not selling their homes. So there's a lot of inventory that's not hitting the market that otherwise would hit the market if we were in a normal environment. So now prices are going up because there's not as much supply and it's just a big mess. Another reason for the prices going up is that over the last few years, a lot of people were overpaying for homes. When I say overpaying, I mean paying more for the the property than what it's worth getting into bidding wars and feeling like they would never have an opportunity to buy a house again. That's the worst thing you can do as a potential homeowner, real estate investor is to pay more for a property than it's worth and pay more for a property than you're comfortable with. So that's another reason that we're in this situation we're in right now. Unfortunately, many of these folks are being forced to sell those properties now because they couldn't actually afford it. Now, it was crazy to me to hear them say that home buyers need to make about $116,000 per year to afford the tip typical U.S. home. That's just crazy to me. According to the most recent U.S. Census, the median household income in America is about $75,000. So it's far below that 116 that they're talking about. In my previous videos, I've talked about specific cities where a family making the median household income literally has no chance to buy a property. Now, I know this is disappointing, but make sure you stay until the end because I have a solution for this. Now, unfortunately, the comment he made in the video about the age of 
of the first time home buyer is true. And the other information I found out about home buyer ages was even worse. The median age of all home buyers increased from 31 years old in 1981 to 49 in 2023. Its record high was 53 last year compared to 42 a decade ago. First time home buyers were a median of 35 years old in 2023, up from 31 in 2013 and 29 in 1981. Repeat buyers were 58, up from 52 in 2013 and 36 in 1981. So the ages of home buyers of all types has just continued to go up. I know I can't be the only one who sees how much of a problem this is. So let's check out the rest of that clip. And like I said, make sure you stay until the end because I have a solution. Some declaring we're in a housing bubble, but experts say not so fast. Prices are being driven by supply and demand. We don't have those irrational reasons of funny, risky mortgages in the marketplace, and therefore the housing market is on solid foundation. It may be on solid foundation, but financing a home is not expected to get much cheaper anytime soon. The rate on a 30-year mortgage you saw there currently a little over 7%. Experts I spoke to expect those rates to end the year slightly lower. Diane, we're probably looking at about 6.5%. So, Alexis, the real estate is usually cyclical. So is there any sense of when that cycle might restart and when home buyers might see some relief here? I think a couple of things need to happen. One is that mortgage rates need to come down. One way to help do that, the Federal Reserve promising to cut interest rates. If we get a cut later this year, that might bring some relief. It won't be huge relief, but something. And then we also need more homes to be built. We need contractors to go out there, build homes. They've been dealing with higher material costs and labor costs. It's starting to loosen up a little bit. But if we had that combo working together, mm -hmm. we'd start to see some relief. All right, Alexis Christophers, thank you. Sure. So as far as a housing bubble nationwide, they are correct. I don't foresee a nationwide housing bubble. However, in my recent videos, I spoke about several cities in Florida where the home prices are plummeting, where homes are staying on the market for one year, two years, and they keep cutting the prices because they cannot sell. And there's also cities where inventory has reached and surpassed pre-pandemic levels. So real estate is local. That's one thing I want you to know. Real estate is very local. It's very seldom that something happening in one city is going to be the exact same thing in another city. So it's important for you to study different markets and understand the trends and what's going on in the cities you're looking to buy in. Now, regarding the point about the interest rates, I'm honestly sick and tired of people pointing to the interest rates as the main issue. As we've discussed today, as I've discussed in a bunch of videos, the problem is primarily, in my opinion, the price. How else do you explain the fact that in the last four years, homes have appreciated almost 50% and it's surpassing entire decades in just four years. That is a problem. And that is the problem, in my opinion. Now, if interest rates drop, I don't think prices are going to go down. I believe it's going to be the opposite because there are folks who have been sitting on the sidelines, saving their money and waiting for something to happen in the real estate market. And unfortunately, we might get back to those crazy bidding wars that I told you were so terrible a couple of years ago because folks will be so eager to come back into the market because the interest rates are lower. But that doesn't necessarily mean you're going to be saving money because folks are just going to get into bidding wars again. Let me know what you think about that in the comments. The point I do agree with is we need more development. We need more inventory inventory, more building of homes. So as of March 2024, we had 3.2 months of inventory and it's actually going back up. So if we go back to October 2023, we had 3.6 months of inventory and then it steadily declined into January. And then if we go to February, we're at 2.9. And like I said, we're back at 3.2. So hopefully we can get some more inventory in the market. According to Bankrate, the market needs five to six months of housing supply to be balanced. So we're about halfway there. And I'm honestly not sure how long it'll take to get us back to a balanced market. Now let's talk about the solution to all this. The reality for many of you is where you live is absolutely unaffordable. I can name a bunch of cities and you know where they are. Whether you're in South Florida, whether you're in New York City, the Bay Area, LA, Seattle, there are so many places where you watching right now simply can't afford to buy a property because it's simply too expensive. I was in the same position as you and believe me, I live in California, I'm still in the same position as many of you watching. Everything changed for me when I discovered I could invest 
out of state and generate cash flow while staying in the city where I live. It honestly changed my life and I've been building my portfolio ever since and I intend to continue to do that. I highly recommend if you're in a city where it's too expensive that you consider investing out of state, especially if you're not in a position where you can pick up and move to a lower cost of living area. My recommendation to you, especially if you need to stay where you're at, is to take your money and invest out of state and start building up your assets, start building up your cash flow. I mean, let's be honest, instead of waiting 20 years to hopefully have a chance to buy a property where you currently are, I think you're better off taking that money out of state because the reality of it is in 20 years, when you finally save the money up, homes where you live are going to be even more expensive. I understand it could be scary just thinking about investing in a place where you don't live or even in a place where you can't easily get to. I understand the feeling. That's my experience right now, but I want you to know that it's possible. You simply need the right information and the right team to help you get the job done and help you sit back and start collecting some cash flow. And the reason I'm saying this is because I've done it, I'm doing it, and I've learned so much along the journey. You simply need the information and a plan, and you can also invest out of state and start getting some cash flow. So I got you covered. In the next few days, I'm coming out with a free training that's going to teach you exactly what you need to do to successfully invest out of state. You can watch it at your own pace. It's a quick watch, and it's going to give you the foundational tools you need to start taking some steps forward. In the meantime, I have two free resources that I want you to download. The first is the Remote Landlords Toolkit. This toolkit will empower you with the information so that you understand understand exactly what it takes to be an out-of-state investor. The second is the Creative Financing Playbook. It'll give you proven strategies that will help you finance your out-of-state properties. The links to those are in the description of this video. So now that you know why homes have gone up 47% in the last four years, I want you to learn about four homes that you can buy from Home Depot for $25,000 or less. Yes, you heard that right. Check out this video right here.